A couple of caveats before we get started. Uh, caveat number one is this video is going to be all about the booktube community and is probably not going to be of interest to anyone else. I, I do wear a couple of different hats on this channel, meaning I do, I do make some videos that are not related to booktube, uh, but I also make a lot of booktube videos. So people who are coming to this channel from other directions, uh, th th this one's all about booktube. Caveat number two is uh, I have not scripted this talk out and I'm a little bit worried that perhaps I should have uh, because when I do an unscripted talk, uh, it's 50-50 whether or not my ramblings will be coherent or not. But for a few different reasons, I didn't script it out. The primary reason is I just don't have time this week. So I'm, I'm hoping to just put up the camera, press record it, and make a quick video. The second reason is in the past, sometimes when I've tried to outline what I wanted to say, I found the outline more distracting than helpful. Um, so we'll see how this goes. If you're familiar with this channel, you you probably know that sometimes I, I my ramblings go off on tangents and I, I just lose my coherence. And, and if you're new to this channel, be forewarned. Okay, those caveats aside, uh, l let's talk about what I want to say here. Uh, this video was prompted by a couple of different things that I've been observing with the BookTube community. Uh, a lot of it has actually not been on BookTube itself, but on Twitter. So as I've been getting more involved with BookTube, I've been following other BookTubers on Twitter. Uh, and I've seen on Twitter some activity that that's not always reflected on the main channel themselves, but uh, on Twitter there are some booktubers who are very upset about the subscriber count. Uh, either upset that the subscriber count isn't going up fast enough, or that it's stagnated, or upset when the subscriber count starts to go down. Uh, and people who appear to be really depressed about this, uh, and then I've also seen a couple videos, one of them recently, um, about somebody making a, a, a video about whether or not they should quit YouTube because they're not satisfied, sorry, quit BookTube because they're, they're upset about their, um, the, their view count. In, in, in this case, uh, the subscriber count wasn't an issue, but the view count for each particular video uh, what was not as high as she wanted and it was depressing her. Um, so I wanted to make a video. I was initially thinking about making a video saying, Dear Booktubers, please don't worry about your subscriber count or your view count. Uh, and um, making a video that perhaps would be a little bit preachy in tone, but I, I hope this comes across that I'm trying to help. Uh, I, I see that you're upset about something and I'm, I, want, I want to offer advice that I, I, think, I, I genuinely think could help. So it, apologies if this comes up as condescending or whatever. The, the intention is to help. I decided against titling the video that way for a couple of reasons. First reason is I thought it would be disingenuous to set myself above this as if this, this were something that other people were doing and that I was all above it. When in reality, uh, I am just, uh, I, you know, I, to the best of my recollection, I haven't made a video about this or I haven't tweeted about this, but it's certainly something that has occupied some of my mental space, meaning I, I have a tendency to get just as much obsessed with subscriber counts and view counts and comments uh, as, as other people. I, the, the only difference between me and these other people is, is maybe I haven't articulated it. And secondly, uh, I think it's an open question whether or not you can do BookTube and divorce yourself from the social media uh, addiction part of it. So I decided to make it more of a discussion. Uh, can, can we do BookTube? and enjoy the positive parts of BookTube while not having the destructive parts of social media addiction. So 
I, I want to start by giving some background to explain my viewpoints and where I'm coming from this. Uh, I should note that this background is coming from uh, The Moral Animal by Robert Wright, which I read this past year, reviewed on this very channel. Please check out my review, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, uh, about uh, about evolutionary psychology and, and why we human beings do a lot of the irrational things we do uh, because of uh, our evolutionary environment. Uh, it's also uh, a number of articles uh, I've and videos I've read about social media addiction and brain chemistry and serotonin, um, mixed in with some of my own extrapolation from what I've read. But basically, my my understanding is this. So. We human beings uh, do a lot of irrational things because we have evolved in a, a climate or a situation which is not reflective of modern life. So we, we, we were evolved to live in small groups, tribes, and we were evolved to be interdependent on the people in those tribes for our food and survival. Uh, you know, uh, hunting together, farming together, gathering together, and then sharing together in that food that we had collected to ensure our mutual survival. And because evolution moves at such a slow pace, uh, even though our current landscape, our current environment doesn't reflect that at all, uh, our, our brains have not evolved to catch up to that. So the, the idea behind evolutionary psychology is... Uh, our psychology uh, has evolved to incentivize us to do things that we don't entirely understand. So that there's, there's, there's a whole subconscious working beneath the surface that we don't really understand and that we can't rationalize it, but is trying to make us act in ways that would have been beneficial in that evolutionary landscape. And one of the big things is it's conditioned us to seek approval from the people around us uh, and to seek recognition of status from the people around us, both, both because we don't want to get ostracized from the group, but also even beyond that, the higher our status within the group, the, uh, the more resources might be given to us. Uh, you know, the, the respected person in the group might get a, a higher portion of the meal. Uh, also, uh, more mate selection, you, you might be able to select a, a higher quality of mate if, if you're higher status, uh, and, and also maybe more resources given to your offspring uh, or protecting your family. And as part of that chemistry, the, the way evolution tries to get us to work in various ways is uh, the brain will release uh, different chemicals, serotonin or, or dopamine, uh, when you get positive affirmations of your status. Um, so when, when people seem to be pleased with you and when people give you compliments, this will release the, the serotonin. Now th this is, I believe, the reason for one, one of the paradoxes uh, of social interaction, which is when you get together with your friend at a coffee shop or whatever, you have the urge to talk about your own life in your own interests. And quite often people are more concerned with talking than they are with listening. They're not overly interested in listening to what their friend has to say. They want to tell their friend all about themselves. And this is paradoxical because you would think, you know, when you're talking, you're not learning anything. So why, why do we want to dominate the conversation? Uh, we, sh we should be wanting to say, no, you tell me. I'm, I'm here to learn. T tell me about the books you've been reading. Tell me about what you're interested in. Tell me about the gossip. I want to learn from you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you would think we, we, would, we would be conditioned to listen rather than to speak. But when you speak and when other people are showing interest in what you're saying, that's sending affirmation that you are an interesting person or that your status in the group is being reaffirmed. I... If you've ever had the experience, everybody's had this at some point of your lives, sitting at a table with maybe three or four people, 
and you're talking about something and they are just spellbound by what you're explaining. They're hanging on your every word. That is such a rush. Uh, I've, I've had that experience, I think, only a handful of times in my life, but uh, it, it put me on cloud nine for the rest of the week. Uh, just, just remember, they were really listening to what I was saying. They were really interested in what I was saying. It, it just made me so happy. Um, even though, like, in the modern life, it doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. You're like, well, what, what, what do I care? How does that affect my ability to get my, my monthly wage or, you know, my, 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 weekly, um, my weekly paycheck is completely my, – my ability to secure food and water and shelter for my family is, is completely disconnected from this, right? But it's, it's, it's something we obsess with. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to the point. So I think, as has been well documented by now, social media companies have studied this and they have learned how to hack this. So on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram, uh, they have figured out ways to get people addicted to the positive feedback. So when you post a photo on Instagram or when you post a photo on Facebook and people like it, you get the serotonin rush, which is designed in your ancestral environment um, to give you a positive affirmation of, of your social status in the tribal group. But because it's now been we are now living in these internet communities which are much broader. It's gone a bit out of control. Um, and I'm sure you've been reading the same stories I have in the news about teenagers who get addicted to Instagram uh, and they post a photo and they get so many likes and their serotonin levels go up and that's their high point of the day. And then they post another photo the next day and it doesn't get quite as many likes as the photo the previous day. And then they're depressed for the rest of the week. Uh, and the, the way that these, these, this brain chemistry is being messed with by social media to keep you addicted and keep you craving that next rush of brain chemistry, the, the, how people are craving attention on Twitter and craving retweets and craving likes on Facebook and Instagram and comments and all these things that are, are meant to be affirmations of your social status but lose all real meaning when it's, when it's in a, internet, a broader internet where there is no real community. Because as, as a few people have written, we are not evolved to have communities of this size. We're evolved to have small tribal communities and things go a little bit haywire in our brain when we're on social media playing to these larger communities. So I think most people are aware of this, but I, I'm a little bit worried that people are not making this same connection with YouTube and with BookTube because I think YouTube may be best understood as a social media platform. Meaning, I think the design at YouTube is designed to hack your brains in the same way that Twitter and Facebook and Instagram are. The subscriber count s seems to me to be indicative of this. Now, if maybe I... Maybe I only have an elementary understanding of this, so, so let me know in the comments below if I'm getting this wrong, but my understanding of subscriber count is it used to be something that YouTube used actively to determine what videos would pop up in your feed, and now it doesn't really mean anything anymore. It's, it's an outdated, it, it's, a, it's a relic of an earlier day on YouTube, and it doesn't really mean anything except YouTube has gamified it to, to convince us that it means something. So, for example, when I log on to YouTube and I go onto my front page, what I do not see is a reflection of my, of my subscriber feed. 
Uh, I don't even know I w where I would find a reflection of my subscriber feed. Perhaps it's on YouTube somewhere. But I, I see the videos that the YouTube algorithm has served up to me, which is not at all a, a reflection of, of what I subscribe to. Uh, I like, like a lot of people, I don't subscribe to the big YouTube channels uh, because I figure, well, well what's the point? They, they've got enough subscribers um, and I, I have no trouble finding them. So I subscribe to a lot of smaller channels, BookTube and stuff like that. But I subscribe to them and then I immediately forget about them. Uh, I, I, do, I do not see them popping up on my front page. Um, and obviously the same is true for people who subscribe to me. So if, 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 if you look at my subscriber count, and then if you look at how many people are actually watching the videos, you know, at, at the moment I've got 1,500 subscribers and a video uh, that I post will get anywhere between 10 to 25 views typically. If, 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 I, if I get 50 views or over on a video, I get really excited because that's that I'm like, oh, wow, people are actually watching this one. Uh, Actually, those view counts are misleading as well. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. But YouTube has gamified the subscriber count. So if you get to 100 subscribers, you, you get to personalize your URL. If you get 1,000 subscribers, you are theoretically uh, able to monetize. But even that, I think, is a, is a little bit of a, um, a grift. Because first of all, I, I mean, I've got over 1,000 subscribers. I could not monetize if I wanted to because my view count, the, 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 not, sorry, not the view count, the hours watched on my channel is pitiful. Uh, it, I think you need like 4,000 hours watched within the past 10 months or, or something like that. And I've got half of that. Um, so, you, you know, people are subscribing to me. Uh, and I think a lot of people who are subscribing to me are people who, who um, they say, oh, okay, he seems nice, support BookTube, uh, give him a, a subscription, um, but then completely forget about me. And I, I do the exact same thing. So I, I'm not, it, 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 if you've subscribed to me and forgotten about me, it's, it's okay. Uh, I, I do likewise, thank, thank you for the subscription. Um, so, but even then, even if, even if I did monetize, the, the, the top booktubers get what ten dollars a month uh for their monetization and that that's like the the booktubers who are doing really well um so this this allure of getting to the next level so you can get the reward and the serotonin release it's it's a game it, it's it's a it's a grift that youtube has created to try and gamify social media in the way that these other platforms have tried to gamify social media so that you get obsessed with getting to the next level on it. Um, now, as, as for the view counts, uh, I mean, one video I mentioned, was she, she was upset because she wasn't getting the view counts. The view counts as well are completely misleading. So, for example, on this channel, like, like I said, most of, my, most of my videos get about 10 or 20 views. But if you actually click behind the analytics on those views and see what those mean, uh, the vast majority of people do not make it past the first minute. Uh, and this is more, this is especially true when you look at my highest viewed videos. So uh, I've, I've, got, I've got some videos that have gotten over a thousand views. Uh, at this time of recording, I've got one video, which I think is 1,400 views. Uh, so, sorry, 14,000 views, 14,000 views. Uh, but that's because I, I, no, I, I did not plan this out, I, I swear, but I, I review everything I read. And in the course of reviewing everything I read, I happen to review a book that's assigned reading at a number of uh, schools somewhere in the Middle East, I believe, where students are struggling 
to understand the book and are looking, searching YouTube for anyone talking about this book. And they click on the video, they watch about a minute of it, they decide, okay, this is not useful at all, this is just some guy rambling, he's not explaining the book, and, and then they click off. So it, the view count is not an indication of the quality of the videos or how successful the videos are, it's an indication of how the title of the video will pop up in a YouTube search. Uh, it does not mean that the people who actually clicked on the video enjoyed the video. Sorry, let, let, let me back up. It, it, it does not mean they watched it all the way to the end. It does not mean that they watched more than a minute of it. And if they did watch it, it doesn't mean that they enjoyed it. Uh, Quite frequently, when I review a video, uh, sorry, when I make, when I review a book, uh, and the title of that book happens to pop up and the happens to get hits from the YouTube search engine about people who are searching for information about that book, they are angry when they find my video and they click on it, and it's just me doing stream of consciousness rambling for uh, 30 minutes uh, and you know I get comments like what give it useful information about this book or shut up or you know th this this video was long and rambling and I didn't learn anything from it you, you know you, you you get those when when your when your videos get outside of the booktube community you you can get some angry comments like that so it's it's not always to to be sought after so the the point I'm trying to make uh, is that the subscriber count is meaningless, the view count is meaningless, and we shouldn't get obsessed about them. Now, th the discussion I'd like to have is whether it's possible not to get obsessed about them. Because there, there, are, there are people, when, there are a number of experts, when they talk about social media addiction on Twitter or on Facebook, they will say the best thing to do is just delete your account. Uh, thinking that you are somehow smarter than the uh, psychologist at Facebook or the psychologist at Instagram is a losing game. They know exactly how to hack their brain. They know exactly what they're doing. And you thinking, well, I'm just gonna use Facebook to keep in touch with old friends. I'm not, I'm not gonna get addicted to it. I'm not gonna spend hours scrolling on it. Um, you're, you're not going to win against them. Uh, they, they know exactly how to hack your brain and, and you have just this primitive little ape brain that e evolved in the savannas of, of Africa and you're not going, you're not going to outsmart them. I wonder if the same thing is true of YouTube, of, of BookTube. I, I, I wonder if it's impossible to divorce ourselves from the addictive social media aspects of YouTube. And you, YouTube has certainly done its best to set it up so that, y yeah. I, I mean, what, what I want to say is ideally, ideally we would say to each other, look, don't worry about your subscriber count. Don't even check your subscriber count. Don't worry about your view counts. Don't even look at your view counts. Don't worry about how many comments you get on a certain video. And that's easy to say, but I, to, to me it seems like an open question, and, and I make this comment as somebody who has tried to not get caught up uh, in, in these metrics and yet despite my best effort still finds myself uh getting the serotonin hit when a video gets more likes than usual or still in spite of myself still feeling a little bit sad when my subscriber count noticeably drops uh yeah so i don't know let, let me know what you think uh, it, it, it could be that this, the, the social media addiction part of it is 
just baked into it. Uh, and I don't know if this is something we need to talk about more on BookTube because I, I think this is a negative aspect of the platform that perhaps doesn't get advertised to new BookTubers as much. Um, the other thing, this might be a little bit controversial, but um, the other thing, right, so the really wonderful thing about BookTube is the sense of community and the kindness that BookTubers show to each other. And what's really wonderful about this is, is a lot of BookTubers have said to themselves, they said, what do I want more than anything in the world? I want views, I want subscribers, I want comments. And so they've, they've recognized that this is a want that they have. And so they, they, then they said to themselves, well, how can I make other people happy? I'll give them views, I'll give them comments, I'll give them subscribers. And so this is a feature of BookTube where BookTubers will find newbies or BookTuber channels with low subscriber counts. And they'll say, okay, everyone go to this channel and subscribe to them. They're, they're doing good work. They deserve more subscribers. It, it's not fair that they only have 300 subscribers when they're making such quality videos. Um, and that, I don't want to criticize the, the emotions behind that because I, I think people are, you know, it's, it's genuine. And what, what else impresses me about BookTube is this seems to be something that a lot of people have done independently of each other. So like there's no mass movement. It's just a whole bunch of BookTubers because they're just nice people, have independently of each other arrived at this conclusion that they need to support each other and that they need to support uh, smaller booktube channels. What worries me a little bit though is again this obsession with subscriber count and it worries me that perhaps we're all addicts uh, who are enabling each other um, with with this effort, effort to get subscriber counts up of smaller channels. Um, so that, that's, that's maybe another thing I want to throw out there. Okay, so, so what to do about this? I, I'm not sure, and as I've already said, I'm not sure it's possible to divorce ourselves from the negative aspects of social media addiction. And then it becomes an open question whether the positive aspects of YouTube balance each other out from the negative aspects of, of social media addiction. But possibly, just possibly, it, we can regulate our feelings a little bit with self-directed self-talk. So even though you find this impulse to get obsessed with view counts and subscriber counts, Possibly you can regulate this by talking yourself back down. And he, here's what I would suggest maybe. Uh, as has been pointed out by other people, the internet landscape, our, our brains aren't designed to deal with it. Our brains are designed to, to have a much smaller circle of friends. Now, in normal life, if you can talk for 30 minutes about a book you've been reading or about anything and you can get two or three people at the at the table to pay attention to what you're saying and actually be interested in what you're saying you're doing pretty well uh, that that would be a good day for you in real life and I I would say on YouTube if you talk about a subject and you get two or three people to pay attention to you, you're doing pretty well. And anything on top of that is, is, is unnecessary. Um, now, I, I hesitate to say that for because, I mean, there, there are perhaps booktubers or YouTubers out there who aren't even getting positive feedback from two or three people. Uh, and so then, then it becomes then it becomes the same thirst for affirmation, just with the bar lowered a little bit. I 
part of me would like to say, look, just, just make videos about whatever you want to make. And don't worry about if anybody watches them. But I, I wonder if human psychology, if that's a realistic goal, given what human psychology is. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's the same way of saying, look, just, just write your novel and don't worry about if anyone reads it or not. Just write it for yourself. And, and obviously people do that. Pe people do do that. I, I've done that. But then the, there is this, we, we have this psychology, don't we? We're, we're evolved to be social beings and we can't, arguably we can't escape our psychology. Maybe people just need that positive feedback from two or three people. I don't know, but two or three people should be enough. And, and I, I know it doesn't feel like enough because we're, we're addicted to always chase, chasing that next serotonin rush of getting more likes and more subscribers. Um, but as you know, as has been well documented, that doesn't make you happy. Uh, the, the, the person, you know, the teenager who posts on Instagram and gets 100 likes is right back to that search for approval the very next day. That emptiness, that emptiness comes right back the very next day. Uh, and that, that's, that's true of booktube as social media. Okay, so, sorry. Un I'm, I'm going unscripted here. Uh, positive affirmation from two or three people is enough. And your, your view counts won't, won't reflect that. Your subscriber counts won't reflect that. You'll see that reflected in the comments. Well, you will get a comment which indicates that somebody watched all the way through your video or they watched a good portion of your video and they picked up on something they, that you said and they gave you feedback which indicated that they, they were paying attention to your video for a, a substantial amount of time. And again, in my opinion, you, you can't expect that for every video. Um, you, you'll, you'll have videos where people don't pay close attention or where, where people are not interested. But if you can get that for some of your videos, if, if you can get two or three people to pay attention to the video and interact with what you say, some of the time you're doing all right. Now, it's not going to feel like it's all right because YouTube is trying to hack your brain through social media addiction and your brain is designed to seek these, these serotonin. So you're, you're, you're going to start to, to want more, but try to talk yourself down. Also, uh, try not to direct too much of your mental energy towards social media. If, if you feel like you're obsessing about it more and more, and again, it's, 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 de it's, designed, it's designed to do that. It's designed to get you to obsess more and more. Try and go outside, try and redirect your social energy, sorry, your mental energy towards your relationships in real life or towards advancing your career or towards some other aspect of your life because, uh, the social media and booktube is not going to make you happy in the long run. It's not, it's not a stable thing to direct a lot of your mental energy towards. Along with that, um, talking, coming back to what I was saying before about this uh, booktube community urge to, to give more subscribers to new channels. Uh, I mean, fine, subscribe, but I, I think if, if somebody you know, if, if a booktuber you stumble across is doing good work and you enjoy watching them and you're worried that they might not, you, you want to keep them going because you're, you're, you say that this is a voice that I enjoy having on booktube and I'm worried that if they don't get positive affirmation, they might stop making videos. Uh, try to try to give them something that's a m more of a genuine human act interaction than trying to shout them out and get their subscriber count up. Uh, <clears throat> say, give them a message saying, hey, I, I really enjoy the work you're doing on this channel. Uh, I, I really enjoy these uh, videos that you're making. 
Um, now, of course, I, I realize that by saying that, those messages are also going, the, the, the result of those messages is going to be that the recipient is going to get a serotonin boost. And this is also a form of social media addiction. Uh, you know, this, the same way people get addicted to checking their emails. Uh, even, so, so perhaps there's a question about whether even this is, is feeding that addiction, but at the very least, it's a much more genuine human interaction uh, than it is to, to, to just get obsessed about the numbers of sub subscriber counts and view counts. So, uh, yeah. I, I'm coming to the end of this video. I'd like to make a couple apologies. Uh, one apology, I, I, I worry that in a little bit in this video, I set myself up as somebody who is preaching. Uh, and, uh, and an honest video would acknowledge that I, I am just as much, um, I, I, I'm not above this. Uh, I, I've, I've gotten just as much concerned about view counts and subscriber counts and, and all these other stuff as anybody else. So I apologize if I've, as, as I've been talking, perhaps I've fallen into the trap of trying to, to sound like I'm above it and I'm giving advice to all you people below me. Uh, but the, these, are, these are the goals that I'm trying to set for myself. Um, and I think I'm, I'm hoping that it might be helpful to share this perspective with people who I see on booktube and who I, booktubers who I see on Twitter who, who are also getting concerned about, uh, about subscriber counts and view counts. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm going to shut the video off now.